They toured a lot in the early days. They found it, you know, titillating, and, and it, it amused them that these girls would do anything. So they would, like, push it as far as they see what these girls would actually do. It was a, an extremely volatile, intense, uh, traveling rock and roll circus, you know, that, that was the epitome of kind of 70s... Uh, uh, rock and roll success and glamour and excess and that's just what Led Zeppelin were. Outrageous stories followed the band like, uh, well, a pack of sharks. That dangerous creature appropriately appears in the most notorious groupie story of all, the Led Zeppelin shark incident. That was the wildest thing I've ever been involved in or saw in my life. It was pretty wild. I don't know whether it really happened. I mean, I don't recall that incident. I don't even know if you can tell all the details. <clears throat> on VH1. I remember hearing about it from a Frank Zappa song, which went something like, Mood Shark. <laughs> it was 1969 at Seattle's Edgewater Hotel, a favorite stopover for rock bands playing in the area. I found this woman who was uh, very eager to do whatever, you know. And um, in this hotel, you can go buy fishing poles and you could fish out the windows. It's right on the water. Basically what I remember is that Bonzo and I were fishing out the window of the hotel. We heard noise from another room and of course we didn't want to miss out on anything. And we went over there and there was some girl lying on the floor. So when they come in, they had this mud shark in their hand. It was either the shark or the snapper. And they had this chick. And the chick was like up for anything, you know. So before we, we knew anything, the chick was sitting on the chair and they were like I, I don't know who it was, I can't remember, they were like hitting her on the back with the mud shark. Hey lady, you got the love I need. This chick had everything done to her with the fish, with ketchup, with, with bottles, with, ket with butter, with everything that I've ever seen done in my life. I mean, it definitely happened. There was a shark and there was a girl. And she liked it. I was like, you know, I was just shocked. I think I was in shock for the whole thing, really. The Zeppelin band members always played coy about the incident. So you want to know whether I ever did any of these weird and wonderful things? Well, I might have done, but I can't remember it. Whether it was true or not, the shark incident stayed with Led Zeppelin as groupies spread rumors of the band actually feeding a girl to a bunch of sharks. It was a new low in groupie folklore. What everyone does agree on is that Jimmy Page wasn't involved. He had his own way of treating groupies. Part dark prince, part scoundrel. He kept his favorite, Lori Maddox, under lock and key. I started modeling for a magazine called Star Magazine, which is sort of a cult magazine now, which was a early 70s pre-groupie teen magazine that made 13-year-olds look like they were 40 in all Vogue clothes and with musicians and rock stars. and. Um, sort of highlighted these girls as being groupies, but they really weren't, they were just models. Lori was a fixture on the Sunset Strip scene. Jimmy first spotted Lori at a poolside party at L.A.'s Hyatt House, otherwise known as the Riot House. He knew then he had to have her. What happened was I was kidnapped, literally, and um, he told me he was going to be with me, and I said, no, he wasn't, and he said, yes, I am. And then we all ended up at the Rainbow, and we were at the Rainbow, and Richard Cole says to me, Get in the bloody car, and if you move, I'll have your head. I'm sure if he said, I want her, I'd have gone and asked her to get in the car or whatever, or carried her out. I don't think we ever viewed her as 14 years old. I mean, none of those girls look 14. And next thing you know, we're at the hotel. I'm walking down the hall. Next thing you know, I'm pulled into this door, and there I was basically kidnapped. And I turn around and look, and there's Jimmy sitting in the corner of the room with a hat and a cane, saying, I told you, I'm going to have you. Jimmy and Lori stayed together for several years in an intensely private relationship. He always left me with the security locked in the room. <laughs> I wasn't really allowed to go very many places with him. Many have wondered what Paige was doing keeping a teenage lover in a Los Angeles hotel room, but according to Lori, love conquered all. It was worth every minute, <laughs> truly. He was a beautiful person and he touched my life.